Hi. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Brothers in Dungeons. How is everyone in the chat today? How are we doing? Hi, Fatal. They're doing great. So yeah. bef before we get started on the recap, I wanted to say that this encounter in today's episode is brought to you by my friend Ma Peppers. He helped me build a custom monster for today. So exciting stuff. Oh, great. Exciting Awesome. Stuff. <laughs> I actually I just realized that you. I have something to do. You're, so. just lead, you're leading it in that we're getting a monster. It's not even a surprise. All right, there's going to be a murder. The and, train. It's the train. The train's a monster. In last oh, week's oh. episode, the gang started traveling to Kemen. Uh, we saw Archie get naked a couple of times and light the forest on fire. As they huh. kept going, they encountered a bridge, took a very long time at the bridge for some reason, and ended up going around, only to find out that it was a mirage. Once they got to the caves of Kemen, Archie started hearing weird whispers inside of his head, and they walked into the cave, and he received a weapon to help balance out the fire that he had been experiencing early on in the episode. After that, they did a little bit of shopping and started out to get on the train to head to where Archie's mother asked him to meet her. Uh, you guys have just now started boarding the train. So you guys walk in and this is your bed area. There is four beds and two couches in this particular car. Uh, only wealthy people travel by train here, so you guys get your individual car for the party to rest. Dibs. <laughs> um, you guys can choose to go to sleep, or there is a dining car and like a lounge car up towards this side of this. Well then. <laughs> 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 are you guys all choosing like, to rest no. or are you going to explore the rest of the train first um has torment been on a train before i'm gonna say no because she probably didn't have enough cash to do so um i'm gonna assume that torment is feeling a little bit motion sick okay and is going to just lay down <laughs> Yeah, Iggy's yeah, gonna flop onto that Archie. couch. I get one of those beds. Archie's taking one of those beds. Um, I still have to. Nope. Is the dining car complimentary? Do we know this? <laughs> uh, yes, it's complimentary to all of the guests. Then that is definitely where Hedwig is off to. Okay. Hedwig went, you! Boris is on the Wait, couch. Wait, so, so. On the other couch, you just can't see him right now, because... Do you not have a token yet? Nope. No. No. <laughs> Why not? I'm so I... obsessed with me. Uh, you could you could use the lily one for right now. I need access to it. You will live in the shadow of your sister forever. Uh, yeah. I gotta redo I, I that. I mean, I I look like Lily, so. Yeah, I, 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 gotta, I gotta do that next week. You should be able to add a character now. Uh, yes. Jiggle, it's there. Jiggle. Jiggle. It's Lily. <laughs> Lily without boobs. Yes. I mean, well, I mean, I don't think there were much I mean, boobs so, in the picture. Anyway, um, I'll just just, just give him a mohawk. <laughs> hey, um. Just change the hair, change nothing else about the picture. <laughs> yes. Okay, what all are you guys doing? Hedwig went to the dining cart. Anyone else? Iggy's gonna flop down on the couch and look over at Torment and just kind of, just kind of like look, but know that she should probably keep her mouth shut. Okay. To the dining cart. You're gonna go to the dining cart? 
Okay, for those of you going in the dining car, I'm gonna switch everyone over to over there. Inside, okay. you'll see four dining tables. There are a set of two bars side by side. There is a lounge area right over here. Fancy. And just two chairs right here. Inside, there are a total of five elves sitting at one of these tables. Here on the bar. I figured that's appropriate for Archie. There, I didn't go to. I didn't go to the dining hall. There are there are three tieflings at the bar. Three halflings at the lounge area. And two humans sitting by the green chairs. Let me see. The bar has someone standing behind it as a bartender. There's waitresses going back and forth to or from the table. If you guys need service, you can wave one of them over. Yeah, uh, Hedwig, assuming that you have to set to be waited on to find the table. Okay. <clears throat> a halfling girl comes up to you. What can I get you? Um, is there a menu? <laughs> uh, yes. They <clears throat> they serve mostly like meat and potatoes, that kind of thing. Nothing too too fancy. You guys it didn't pay that much to be on the train. <laughs> Hey, you told me a specific price and I paid it. You didn't tell me that there was, I could have paid extra. You didn't for ask. Better stuff. He paid. He paid for coach. <laughs> exactly. For the first time in forever. <laughs> Rich boy couldn't afford yeah, the premium that. seats. <laughs> Imagine. I don't want to use your icky dice. Ah. Uh, anyway, I guess. <laughs> You got cooties. <laughs> Hedwig just going to point at that. <laughs> what? What did you say, Hedwig? Hedwig's just going to point at something at random on the food. <laughs> okay. She says it'll be 15 copper. She goes to the back and brings you out a plate of spaghetti. Oh, you said it was complimentary. Yeah, complimentary means no... <laughs> oh, lying to us now. <laughs> yes, this oh, she yeah. wants a tip. Fine. She brings you out a plate of spaghetti. <laughs> yes, we berated the DM into not stealing her coppers. Ha-ha! We're absolutely going to die later. No, yeah, of course. Of course. Um... Yes. I need one of you guys to roll a straight d20. Oh, I'll do it. Wait, no, I'm not here. Just kidding. 19. 19? Someone please imagine vividly a kobold trying to eat spaghetti noodles. <laughs> I've been so, imagining it the whole time. It's probably messy. It's Is probably it pretty messy. You, one noodle has time. <laughs> you guys get through the afternoon pretty easily. There is nothing that catches your eye as weird. Um, everyone seems to be in a cheerful mood around the carts. It is now nighttime. What do you guys want to do? Um, eat Go spaghetti. To bed. Okay. A uh, waitress comes over, brings you a plate of spaghetti. Question. <laughs> yes. Do hobgoblins have spaghetti in their society? Is no. It a, is it a thing they might have eaten? No. Okay. Is this good spaghetti? I would say so. It is now Nyorn's favorite food. <laughs> Confirmed. It's canon. Do you have a reaction to his first bite? 
but I don't know what. Oh my god. Why hasn't anyone told me this is so good? I didn't, I didn't know. Thought it was just weird worms. No. No. I love it. And that's it. That's what he says and then he eats. His heart grew three sizes that day. His heart grew three sizes that day. Four spaghetti, nothing else. Uh, instead of taking up one of the beds, Ondoc is setting up a sleeping bag on the floor. Okay, so he stays two. This is a two-week journey. So, if you guys don't have anything that you want to do, or if you don't want to talk to any of the other guests, you can make another straight d20 roll. Or if you do, let me know and we can go ahead and get that started. Uh, Eggy is going to try to give Own Doc the couch and take his cob. Are you sure? Yeah, my back is probably better than yours. No offense, old man. Love you. I'm going to ignore what you said and just say thank you. And he walks over <laughs> to the couch. Okay, anyone else? Um, I guess I'm going to probably take one of the couches instead of the bed since, uh, you know, I'm pretty small. Okay. Um, those of you that have a couch... You notice that Ondoc is taking off the cushions to the couch and starts pulling out a pull-out bed. Rain has futons. Impressive. It's, wow. That's uh that's pretty neat. Um, but I already have enough room. Foreman is looking at him perplexed at like, what the fuck is this shit? Did we move back to the other car screen? You want to no, move it's... back to the other side? I'll push you guys back. There you go. Yes. Okay, is anyone sharing a bed? Because these are king-sized, they're pretty large. Yep, sharing the bed with Torment. Oh. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Torment looks... It's, it's the horns. <laughs> Torment looks <laughs> as they... As she comes to sit down and, and just takes a deep breath. Puts her back to your face and just ignores you. <laughs> Aurora's gonna take the pillows and just like build a wall between them. <laughs> Cushion in case you stab me because I accidentally touch you. <laughs> Armit still says nothing and makes no indication of moving. I think Hedwig is perfectly fine with the apparently 10-foot-long couch. Okay, go ahead and someone make a d20 roll for the night time. I got it. Everyone, it. No, no, it's my turn. Everyone else keeps getting it. <laughs> I don't get to. It's my turn. Fine. It's a 14. I was waiting for the one just to spite you. I was too. Okay, the the night goes by pretty smoothly. You guys all get some good rest. None of you guys have nightmares. Uh, the sound of the train kind of lulls you, all of you to sleep. It is now morning the next day. What are you guys doing? Um, Nobody had nightmares? No. Nope. No. Nope. So uh, we, we successfully got the long rest then? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, is Torment still motion sick? Back. Uh, roll <laughs> constitution and see if she is. Uh, 
That's a 20. She's not. She's used to it now. All right. Uh, Torment's going for breakfast. Okay. Uh, it's the only significant thing of last night, since we're no, we're not intense. We can see each other. Uh, is Hedwig has been using sending every night to communicate with his um, superior slash mother figure. I see. Okay. Hey. So, in those of you that are going to go get breakfast. Instead of the dining tables sitting out like they were, there is now a buffet on top of each one of them with eggs, bacon, mm. sausage, uh, gravy, just anything that is breakfast-like is probably on there. Waffles, pancakes, that kind of thing. Is there breakfast spaghetti? No. Hedwig well, has this is the worst train ride ever, then. <laughs> Hedwig has those uh, starry-ass anime eyes looking up. At the uh, food. You guys notice that before anyone else starts eating over the intercom, someone says, Bless this food to Tara, and you we give our trust. Guys, that box is talking to us. Some kind of magic. It, it's, it's just the person driving the train. Probably. No, clearly that talking box through a box to this. with magic. Right. How do you think this train is running? Do you think it's magic? I don't know, yeah. but I'm going to find out oh. after I eat, like, a lot of bacon. No, I just imagine they have a lot of extra horses. The, uh, you, you know what? I'm going to say you're right. Mostly because I want to roll with that. I feel like it's a good story. The horse, horse train. The elves. Horse train. The elves sitting at the corner of the table start snickering at you guys. Kind of making um, fun of um, you a little bit. Can Maybe. I hear what they're saying? Um. With hmm. my with my passive perception of like nineteen. <laughs> They're just mimicking what you guys are saying and laughing like you guys are really stupid. I'm going to I'm going to turn and start glaring at them over my shoulder. They just smile back at you like any preppy person would. It kind of clears her throat and then starts singing louder. Horsey train. <laughs> Eating breakfast on a horsey train. Uh, it's so, format mean <laughs> so uh, Hedwig rolled a d20 and he got a 1 so things are about to get spicy so yes. you make it Hedwig through. is just eating a bunch of bacon like nothing's happening you guys make it through the rest of the day night starts, starts to settle um, are you guys staying Wait, in the lunch car hmm I wanted to find out how the train works. You can do that another day. What happened this day? <laughs> it, it's, it's, time. Than one. it's time, Blue. It's time. Uh, Which, she just skipped the entire day to nighttime. Well, what you did I do? Really one, then. <laughs> what did Don't you want matter. to do in the meantime? It's time. I want to know how the train works. Uh, do you want me to roleplay that, or do you want to just... Uh, Ask the person that is running the train. I was just going to explore the train until I found the front and figured it out on my own. Okay. We'll say that you did that during the day. You found him. He had looked pretty annoyed, but was still talking to you because you're a guest. But he didn't like it. What are you guys doing during the night? Are you all in the sleeping cart, or are you still in the lounging cart? It's just hitting can't, nighttime, getting dark. Can't help but notice how you didn't answer how it works. Magic. It just works, work, all right? Steam. B, explain exactly how the train <laughs> works. I need schematics. I need to break this down. And y'all oh, wonder why yes. we're in the tonight. 
B is done with our shit. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to get so screwed in this okay. fight. That's definitely coming. Okay, all I needed to know if it was a regular fucking train or a magic train. Uh, it's a mixture of both. Imagine. Hedwig is pleased. school bus, but a train. He has taken, he has taken notes. It's he has acted a cute. Train bus. Okay. Except we're not going to be cruising on down Main Street. Are, it's going to be Payne Street. Are any of you guys in the lounging cart, or are you all in the sleeping cart? What? Depends on the time of night. It's just starting to get dark. Maybe like 7 or 8 Ooh. p.m. That I am probably eating. Okay. Yeah. Gotta get uh, some more of that spaghetti. Yeah. Torment uh, is probably enjoying a cider. Okay. Did they... What other uh, what other meat products do they have? They have steak, burgers, turkey, chicken, um, some sausages. Foreman is also enjoying sausages. Probably has like ten of them on a plate. <laughs> Edwick is getting a chicken. I don't mean some chicken. I mean a chicken. A whole chicken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Iggy, where are you at? Um, Iggy's probably hovering over Hedwig, looking very concerned about where that whole chicken is about to go. Okay. Varus? Uh, he's back in the, uh, not the lounge, the other one. Okay. Aurora and Archibald? What do we do? Uh, what, I, what are you doing? Is that okay? It, yeah, what time of day it, is it? It's about Next. 7 or 8 p.m. The rest of the party are eating. Uh, Your Archie would have eaten earlier. He's probably in... Or Archie would probably be in the, uh, the cabin. Um, either... Ooh, either writing a letter, working on a letter, or probably working out. Okay. Uh, Aurora? Uh, Aurora is teaching Moonbull how to sit. Okay. <laughs> uh, a thunderstorm starts rolling in. It's getting pretty loud. The rain is hitting the train pretty hard. All of a sudden, the lights go out. You hear a scream, and the lights go back in. One of the elves is on the floor with their throat slit, bleeding out. So, there's that. <laughs> Everyone looks at the assassin. Hey, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figure I'm like mid shoveling spaghetti in my face. Yeah, there's like, like ha <laughs> half of an entire chicken currently in Hedwig's mouth. Is <laughs> Torment didn't even get a give them a glance. They're just Torment's still just eating the sausages. Boris is concerned, but then goes back to his. Uh... One of his books and continues writing. God, we don't have we don't have any good people. <laughs> Boy. Um, Archie and Boy, Aurora, you done. guys would have been able to hear the scream from your room. The other elves that were in the party with them are trying to stop the bleeding, but they don't have any healing magic. They're yeah. screaming uh, for help. I'm like, Hed I, I'm like patting Hedwig on the head. I, I mean, I'm Boy. trying. I'm actually trying to do stuff. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> we just kind of went to other people before I got um, to say anything else. So, qu question. Yes. Question. Um, I, I would say if uh, Archie, if Archie heard the scream, he'd probably come running. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, how 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 bad is the elf? Uh, she's almost dead. Okay. Okay. What is it? What to the degree that I might be able to use spare the dying? Yes. Okay. 
I would probably see the elf and then, like, uh, as dramatically as I could, run in, slide next to them, and, like, <laughs> bear the dying. <laughs> yeah. you, you slide in as Hedwig is trying to advance her actual medicine with half a chicken in his mouth because uh, he doesn't have the hands free to pull it out. She kind of gasps, gasps, and starts like hugging you and says thank you. Also starts squeezing your muscles and is like, oh, thank you. Iggy puts her hand down from where she was about to do some healing and just goes, eh. Uh, so wait, so this is, uh, the, this is the chick? Yes, elf. yes. Uh, I will give her a sultry look and be like, <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. She just blushes. Um, she blushes and like snuggles in closer. Torment, Torment secretly will try to throw a sausage at him. <laughs> he might need this extra length. <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> That is a twenty-three <laughs> stealth check to throw a sausage at. F in chat for Archie's sausage. <laughs> and under Torment's breath, you just hear it get a room. <laughs> and just continue to eat the sausage. Like you never once saw her stop eating the sausage. All of a sudden there was just a sausage. As the sausage hits Archie, the lights go out again. You hear another oh, no. scream, but the lights do not come back on. Those of you with dark vision can see that a halfling has been killed, throat slit, and is laying on the floor. What the fuck? I'm gonna start pulling out weapons. <laughs> yeah. Um... Iggy's gonna get a little bit closer to uh, Hedwig and suggest that they regroup. Dur during this time, Hedwig was actually trying to bind the wound of the elf. Okay. So it doesn't bleed anymore. Okay. She's not paying attention to you whatsoever, and when the lights went out again, she kind of jumped into Archie's lap. That's that's fine. She doesn't want to look at what's happening right now. Um, uh, I'm gonna look around. What are all the entrances and exits to this car? So I'm assuming the front and back are uh, are there windows in here that are open or anything that can be open? There are windows and they can be open, but they are not currently open. Uh, Wait, who is the book? The there are currently five elves, three tieflings, two halflings, one half halfling dead on the floor, and two humans in the lounge area. To the left door that leads Hedwig knows towards the front of the train. The right door leads to you guys' sleeping cart. I'm gonna look at just generally everybody in the room, like the <clears throat> civilian kind of people. If you don't want to die, you all need to gather up. Yeah, just put them in one big circle. Everyone's pretty frantic right now, but they're starting to huddle together. Everyone looks really scared. Uh, Iggy is going to look around and say, anyone who can't see in the dark, get in the middle. The two humans... Maybe we should get back to back. Does, um, does anybody have a way to make light? I'm not saying I keep forgetting to take a spell that we can see with, but, um... <laughs> Well, nope, nobody has a torch. I was going to say, I, I, I'm going to open up a torch because I don't have a spell to... Wait, I have produced flame. 
Uh, one of the elves says there is a generator closer to the front of the train. Maybe it's it's it needs to be reset. Um, does anybody know how to actually uh, do that? No. What the fuck is a generator? It it's a thingy that makes power. Um, right. Don't ask me how. That wasn't in the book. One of the male elves, he has a bow on his back. He looks like he could be a hunter. Starts rallying the others towards the front of the train. And he says that these guys don't know what they're talking about. We might as well stick together with our own races. Uh, wow. They're only gonna get us killed. Mm -hmm. He just kind of like looks mm -hmm. at him mm -hmm. and goes, "Well, they can die. That's fine." Cormit just gives them the death glare, like the death glare. Uh, like, I'm gonna do an intimidation. The <laughs> the three tieflings automatically hover around Torment and Iggy. The Two humans plus the one elf that is attracted to Archie is hanging out with Archibald. And the three halflings, weirdly enough, are hanging out with Hedwig. I don't know if it's a height thing or what, but they are. So, um, did anybody actually see, um, how that happened? And he points at the, at the dead halfling. <laughs> No. If it gets close enough, I'll be able to see it, but it runs fast. Um. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to the dead halfling and try to quickly examine the wound. Like what? I'm trying to determine what made that wound. Was it a weapon or? Uh, an animal type claw teeth something. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation. What should I roll? Investigation. Invest. Where is my dice? Okay. Where they're roll supposed my, to be. Roll my favorite one right here. That one. Uh, not no, not bad. Uh, fourteen. Okay. Uh, with that roll, you can see that the throat has been cut pretty clean. It looks like it it could be from a dagger or something like that. You're not sure if it could be a creature, but it's definitely something very sharp. Okay. Um, so, we have no reason to believe that it's only in this room? Um, we we should probably go check. Um, you know the people driving the this this train. Uh, you hear a scream coming from the next car up towards the head of the train. What are you guys doing? See what I mean? That's that's I'll not look good. At Hedwig. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, all right, let's uh, let, let's go. Alice is now concerned and starts going to the party. The one elf that was male that had the bow on his back that led the others into that room with the generator is now dead on the floor, throat slit. Iggy accidentally says, I told you so. And Torment says, he got what he deserved, let's be honest here. Is anyone still in need to move? Is anyone still in the room with the lounging area? Uh, no, Iggy's gonna keep moving. Oh, I think it. we're all still in there right this second. I thought you guys moved up to the next cart to check out the screen. Uh, Did, have we actually moved yet? That's I wasn't sure if we'd actually moved yes, yet. Yes, yeah, you moved. I'm not gonna give you guys a map okay. for that, just okay. yeah. Uh, Aurora and Archie, where are you guys at? 
Uh, you got the mute. Uh, uh, sorry, guys. We had to. We uh we missed like the last five minutes. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, after the halfling died, one of the elves took the rest of the elves to try to get the generator working. They heard a scream in the next cart over where the generator was. The elf that had led them down there is now dead. Same way the halfling died. Where are you guys at? Are you still in the lounging cart or are you in the generator area? Uh, what, what did everybody else do? I believe the majority of them went to the generator area. Um, yeah, we were we were moving towards yeah, that. Yeah, if that, yeah, because I'd um, it would probably be better to get the lights back up and running. Okay. Oh, so. oh. All right. Um, did I, did did you guys happen to see how this happened? No, all we saw was red eyes and then nothing. Okay. All right. Not great. Um. <laughs> anyone know how to fix that? He <laughs> points at the A generator. Uh, the elves all shake their head no. Uh huh. Can I do some kind of uh, check to, uh... Uh, since you come from a wealthier family, make an investigation, see if you can figure it out. <laughs> uh, there's the possibility that I've possibly run into a generator. Yep. Also at disadvantage, what? because he comes from a wealthy family and wouldn't be bothered to do his own repairs. What, what about me? Excuse Repair. me? Uh, Iggy, uh, what kind of what kind of check did you say? Investigation. Um, Iggy, you can also you can either uh, help him or roll yourself. I will help him. Okay. Why someone you... <laughs> all of them out? Someone has just like turned the switch off, and that's it. Uh, it is a twelve total. Uh, did you roll an advantage because Iggy is helping you? No, it's with advantage. Okay. Yeah. No, it's 12. It's 12. Uh, you look at it. <laughs> it sounds like not a 12. You say, mm, yes, yes, but you have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, there uh -huh. is, there is a red button, a blue button, a green button, and a lever. Are there words on these buttons? Nope. Yes. <clears throat> can, can Iggy push him out of the way and get a better look? Uh, Are there <laughs> words on any of these, but on anything on this thing? No. Who's the idiot who designed it that way? Hey, Luke's going to have to have a talk with the railway manager about uh, workplace efficiency. Uh, who, I mean, Karen. whoever does this would know what to do with it. <clears throat> So, actually, I quick question. Have hit it with the back of my hand like the fawns. Everyone just staring at this generator. <laughs> quick question. Can I I want to cast mending on the generator? Uh okay. <laughs> Nothing happens. Yeah, All right, well, well, are there any like tools or anything nearby? I feel like we shouldn't press the red button. Uh, there's a wrench nearby, but other than that, no. Recap the the wrench. It looks like it can open up the panel that all the buttons and lever is on. Um, I'm gonna try and open the panel. Okay. Very carefully. The panel opens up to a bunch of wires connecting the buttons to various electrical pieces in the panel. Does anyone know about this? I mean, it doesn't even try to move. Uh... Just... <laughs> Mm 
does uh, does anything look off? Does does anything look disconnected? No. Like surely I must know like basic stuff, right? Like wire need to be connected. Uh, no, nothing's disconnected. Nothing is disconnected. No. Are there breakers? Yes. Is is one of them off? Uh, it looks like one of them might be, but you're not sure. I'm gonna just go ahead and just flip. If one if one looks different from the others, I'm just gonna hit it and see what it does. Okay, the lights turn back on. I'm a genius. You are so smart, dude. Damn it, I knew I was... If I wasn't a hunter, I'd have been an engineer. Definitely. Varmint just glares at him as usual. That's fair. Varus is just the face of shock, like, oh my god, he figured it out. Okay, you guys Head are... Go ahead. Hedwig is slightly having the door to the hall slightly ajar, like, peering out of it. Uh, you're looking into the hall? Yes. You notice that the halfling body is now gone. Oh? Huh. Mm -hmm. It's moving around us really quick. Well... Ooh. Took Maybe the body. We can set a trap. Do you have something to make a trap with? <laughs> yeah, actually, I do. So, uh, what body did it take? The halfling that was in the lounge area that you guys all left. From from the outside. So the body the was here is still here yes okay i'm gonna pull out uh my rope and cut off a 25 foot segment of it uh Varus is gonna uh ask uh norm because he still doesn't learn the name if he said if he thought the weapon that has been used to murder has been a dagger or something close to. Mm, it might be. It's hard to say. It's something really sharp. Okay. And then he flips um, through his uh, futures telling book to the bloody dagger. Orman uh, just looks at him suspiciously. As he who goes has book. who has the sauce right now? The Parma Marinara. You you, you do. You do. You do. Uh, I gave it to Hedwig at some point, I think. Did he give it back? Uh, I would have assumed I would have. Okay. Well, in that case, um, in that case, I'm going to pull out the book and just hand it out. Somebody take this and start looking at it. He'll take it. Okay. Do you try the... to look through it? Absolutely. Okay. What were you saying, Yorn? In the meantime, I take my rope and I cast Snare. Um, and a, a five foot radius on the ground. Uh, basically, it sets an invisible magic trap. Um, I'm going to put it around the other dead body. Okay. So if it, if it comes to try and get the dead body, um, I believe it's restrained if it hits it. Uh, do you want me to read you the spell, or are you just going to pull up Snare so you can read it, uh, exactly how it works? I'll pull it up. Uh, okay. Iggy, you put your hands in the book. Your eyes turn completely white. You think about all the information that you have so far about what's been happening. You return to consciousness with the book being blank, and you get the feeling that there is not enough information for the book to give you a monster. Uh, Hedwig wants to investigate the other door. Uh, leading towards the front? Yes, he wants to peer forward and see if there's uh, anything happening in that car. Uh, it doesn't look like it. What is the next car anyway? 
it is the next sleeping cart. And then above that is where they are. They're running the train. So is a sleeping car like ours where it's just open? Yes. All right. Well, um, on the upside, no one's dead in this car. I'm going to I'm going to stay near the the doors uh and kind of look toward my trap to see if anything happens there. Okay. You um, guys I've got my crossbow out waiting. You guys hear a scream coming from the lounge car. Wait. Who Who stayed behind? That's behind us, right? Yeah, that's behind you. I thought we were all in here. Um, other guys who are not my friends, uh, did one of your friends stay behind? Uh, you notice that the two humans are not with you. Always oh, humans. great job, humans. Humans are the worst, guys. Yeah. Uh, hearing the scream, I am going to tell... Smog to hide somewhere within my cloak. Okay, he kind of wraps himself around your neck, but underneath the cloak. Is anyone going uh, to the lounge car? Iggy's going to like look that way and then suggest that we don't keep moving through the cars because we don't know what we're up against and it's probably better not to keep opening and closing the doors uh i think i'm also she's also gonna cast see invisibility just in case okay nice uh hedwick is going to look into that car uh one human is on the floor dead the other one is crying over it over the corpse. I guess uh, instead of going to that car. By himself? <laughs> I'm, I'm going with him. Yeah, Iggy's gonna be like, oh, right, we just go. Open, open, open the door. That's fine. What? Ah. Oh, no. Okay. Why, why did you stay behind? Just, just get them out of there. She says that, you know, whether they're with you or not, people keep dying. What did you say, Hedwig? If, uh, if she saw anything, the lights were actually on this time. No, I didn't. I turned around for one second and then he screamed and I turned back and he was dead. Okay, so whatever this thing is, it keeps killing people who aren't seen. I would like to cast Detect Good Is this like Reverse Bird Box? I'm gonna cry. Okay, uh, what does that do exactly? What? Spread. Um, it is... I'm just going to read it out because it's not going to pull up on roll 20. Uh, for, the oh. for the duration, you know if there is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you, as well as where the creature is located. Similarly, you know if there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. Uh, what is the list again? Aberration, Celestial, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, or Undead. Okay. You don't sense anything. Okay. Uh, that is concentration, and it is good up, good for up to 10 minutes. Okay. Um, um, Archie, uh, can you grab the um, deceased fellow there? And uh, ma'am, you, you, you need to come with us. She just says, oh, okay, and just sniffling. We need everyone to be together. It seems that whatever this thing is, it only kills 
when we're not looking. Uh, Archie, are you grabbing the body like he suggested? Yeah, I will. I will pick up the body and uh, carry carry it um, like um, <clears throat> um, carry it in front of me, like against my chest. Make a perception check. Okay. Where did my two die go? Rip. Two dice beef. <laughs> uh, twenty. One total. Okay. You not, you notice blood underneath the one of the of her hands on her finger underneath her fingernails. You also notice a piece of purple fabric in the other hand. Okay. Probably not good. I I I as I'm as I as I'm walking, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and shift. And like grab the fabric, um, and then I'm gonna. I don't, I don't know who all is around me. Just the human and Hedwig. I was there too. Okay, I'm gonna signal Hedwig. I'm gonna like try and like flap the purple fabric at him. Like, take this. What is it? Hedwig will attempt to grab this. Hopefully you're lowering it low enough. Uh, um, I, it would be. I can't remember how tall is Hedwig. Two foot eight. Uh, you're probably gonna have to jump a little. <laughs> <laughs> Fabric acquired. I'm not. I, I'm not purposely trying to hold it out of your, out of your reach, but I am carrying a body. And he's also just short. Uh, where did you get this? It was in her, it was in his hand. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let's all get into the other room first. Um, everyone in keeping in sight of each other. And as we enter back into the generator room, I'm just gonna be like, "All right, everyone, keep looking at each other." Dormant just gives him the death glare. Uh, like that! Hedwig, you got it! <laughs> Hedwig, side note, the fabric that he handed you was purple silk worn by high political figures, usually. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, assuming that uh, they ripped this off of who killed them, the murderer is m at least maybe masquerading as someone of influence. We don't really know who on this train. I'm going to think back at... Everyone that we've seen so far, was anyone wearing uh, something that might match that description? Yes. There was three elves and the three tieflings that are wearing purple silks. Where, where are they now? The tieflings they're, are with us, aren't they? They're all in the same cart with you. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Norman's just going to glare at everyone and say, see, it wasn't me. And just uh, slowly start spitting one of, one of her knives. <laughs> I didn't uh, think it was. I mean, Iggy's just going to try to look at everybody and see if anybody's missing a piece of clothing. Or like a chunk of their clothing, you know. Does anybody have a tear in their clothes? Can I make a perception check to find this or investigation? Uh, you can make an investigation to see if you can see. 
I'll join. I'm helping. Yeah. Uh, I got a 17. With advantage? Oh. I, I use help action for you. It's alright, I rolled 15 twice, so 17 it is. You notice that one of the elves has their silk robe ripped. Two of the tieflings have theirs a little bit ripped, too. The elf says that when the elf in the generator room fell, when the monster hit him, uh, he grabbed onto his robe as he was falling and ripped it. And then the two tieflings say that theirs were already ripped to begin with because they have been traveling a long time in their robes. Insight check? Insight checks. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll assist. With help. I'll assist. And advantage. Cool. 24. Nice. Uh... You notice that the tieflings look a little bit more nervous than the elf, but not by much. Um, can I check their auras? Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, like, do I need to make a roll? We've never rolled for it. No, uh, everyone in the room is showing white. What is their actual emotions? Scared. Scared? Everyone in the room is scared. Besides the party. I was about to say, even Torment. He's the most scared. I don't think I can tell that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the two tieflings. Um... Do do you maybe know anything else? It it would be anything that would be helpful. They both kind of lean down at you. We don't talk to inferiors such as yourself. I'm gonna point oh, my okay. crossbow at him. But you're talking to me right now. Wait, so <laughs> Torment is actually going to stay yeah, yeah, yeah. with with knife drawn, just like you want to try that again. Yeah, Iggy's going to just kind of <clears throat> stand a little bit taller, and is just gonna like uh, ex <laughs> I don't think you know whose son you're talking to right now. <laughs> they kind of <laughs> they kind of just lean up against the wall and kind of smirk a little bit and look at Iggy. And it says, they both smile at you, and one of them says, Victoria, I'm surprised that you align yourself with such creatures. Lars is gonna get pissed off that they said that and slap both of them. Her response is, I'm surprised the two of you still breathe. Why are we, why are we inciting violence? I'm not. I just want them to casually leave our train car and maybe uh, wind up Varus, with a human. Varus, Varus chose violence. Uh, Varus, you're gonna have to try to hit them. Guys, here's the problem. If they know who she is, they have to die. Yeah, we have to, we have to at least knock them out anyway. Yeah, uh, at the mention of, of the name, Torment looks at her like, who, who's that? So I'm assuming you wanted me to roll for that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a 26 for one of them. Okay, you hit one of them. You take one else? damage. Yeah, smack the attitude right out of her. Um, I'm gonna cast Produce Flame at the feet of the one he doesn't hit. Oh no, I'm slapping both. It's just one slap. It's just one firm <laughs> backhand. No, no, it's... <laughs> 
It'd be epic, just one giant slap that hits both of them. Just, uh, yeah. Bitch slap to end all bitch slaps. A, a 180 degree arc slap. No, he was going to slap with one hand, and as soon as he's done with that one, he's going to use his other hand to slap them. Okay. The other one. Uh, how that much was... damage was the first one? Slap. Four. Two. Four? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Four bludgeoning. That's a heckin' slap there. Yeah. And uh, the other one was a 15. Yeah, no, that's actually, sorry. Would a crit be double damage? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Then the first one would have been eight. It's, it's it two, depends. It's two rolls. Okay. Is, that, is that an unarmed strike yes, where that would be... it's flat damage, or are you rolling a dice? Oh, no, it would be flat damage then. So then. It's not double. Okay. A, a crit doubles the dice that you roll. If you're okay. not rolling dice, it does not double. I mean, okay. I guess DM house rule, however you want to do it. But uh, a 15, general rules. A 15 hits. Okay. How much oh, damage? Four again. Okay. Because it's just straight out four. There's no rolling. I think we might be having an issue. Nope, never mind. It's just eight. Both of the tieflings get irritated. The one that you did not hit says, I'd be careful if I were you if you don't want the captain of this train to know who you are. I'm pretty I mean, sure that it doesn't matter since something is killing uh, everyone on the train, uh, but you two are very smart. As, as soon as they say that to him, I'm going to step forward and open my coat a little bit to expose my tattoo. Um. And I'm going to get down on their level, like, look down at them, because I'm assuming they're shorter than I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say... Do you know what this tattoo means? That you're a slaver? Do you understand what that means? Yes. Do you know what I will do to you? They're kind of backing up against the wall and eyes are kind of shifting a little bit. They, they look down at the floor and they say that they're sorry. Um, I am going to, uh, cast Thaumaturgy to change my eye color, make a flicker, and say, good. And then I think Aurora was trying to do something. What, what were you doing, Aurora? Uh, they've already backed down. There's no point in doing it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, besides all that, um... I'm still want to need you to answer the question. I don't know if it's be if you're being shifty because you're just rude or if you know something. We don't know anything. I don't like when people lie to me. Sad. Just rude then. Nikki's gonna kind of <clears throat> like peer out at at uh, Norn's trap and check on it. That's still behind us, right? It hasn't been touched. Arguing isn't gonna keep everybody here alive, even though it's fun. So, uh, maybe we should get back to figuring this out. How about we all look away from that body at the same time? That's a good idea. All right. Three, two, one. Fuck away. Uh, Wait, hold on. I'm still holding the body. No, not, no, not, no, that, not body. that body. Not that body. Uh, the, one, the, one I, the one I trapped. The, the, the elf, elf on the floor body, yeah. unceremoniously trapped up. <laughs> Nothing happens. Maybe we should all leave the room. Maybe it's shy. They had attacked when people were grouped before. Maybe it's too smart. Maybe it needs the lights out in order to... But Is there then... a light switch? But then it's we don't see it. It's in there. <laughs> I can see in the dark. Also, I still have the, the, the invisibility. So maybe I'll be able to see whatever it is. 
I mean, we can't see it if we look away from it either, so... Well, no, the point is to get it to get snagged by this... thing. I'm gonna stay by the trap. We should flip the lights off, see if it comes for the body. One of ah. you stay by the light turn on thing. If the trap triggers, turn it back on. Okay. I'm going to need a lineup of where everyone is during this. Hedwig is going to go over there since the button is probably literally at face level to him. Well, not the button, the breaker. Uh, what is, what does this car look like? It's shorter than the rest. It's empty besides the breaker. I'm going to be 10 feet away from the body slash trap so that, I mean, I, I have dark vision anyway, but I also have blind sight to 10 feet. So if it does get in there and if it's invisible or something, I want to be able to see it with my blind sight. Okay. Uh, where is everyone else? Maggie's going to stay close enough that she can see it, but that, like, if there's anything in it, it won't be able to reach her. Okay. Hedwig will be prepared to turn the light back on. Tormund is with Aurora. Aurora, where are you? Uh, I will be in one of the corners, probably the opposite of uh, Iggy, prepared okay. to shoot and tangle if I see something. Archie? Um, I am, I'm probably just going to be, I'm, actually I'm going to put the body down. Uh, put it at my feet, and then I'm gonna just get into a fighting fighting stance. Like I'm just gonna be ready, okay. right where I'm at. Okay. If it um, if it comes into my sight, uh, I'm I'm basically gonna hold Hunter's Mark, and if I see it, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on it. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys turning off the light now? Be ready with that book, too. Yeah, Iggy's gonna keep the book in her hands. Do it. Okay. The lights turn out. You guys are all focusing either on the body or the breaker. You hear a scream near you. Did we not see it if we have dark vision? It depends. You also that you were focusing on the body, correct? Uh, yeah. That I'm, general the area. Iggy's, I yeah. mean, if Iggy hears a scream, she's gonna look at that. So, Hedwig's not really looking at anything in general. He just got his finger on the on the switch. It came from the front of the cart, or the front of the train, so you guys don't see anything. So it came from a whole different car? Yes. Damn it. But we need the lights off. That's the only way it appears. Rora's gonna go towards the screaming. Uh, with, with the notion that it's only able to be like active in the dark iggy's gonna try the stupid book again she's gonna call it a stupid book too okay um put your hands on the book your eyes go white you come back to you don't have enough information this is the dumbest book ever written uh aurora <laughs> as you head up to the front of the cart you see something dragging a body it doesn't look human, but it's far enough away to where you can't tell exactly what it is. It shoves the whole body in its mouth and then skitters away on the ceiling. Uh, 
How far uh, is it from me? What? How far is it from me? Uh... I would say you're looking through the halls because it's at the very front of the train. So maybe like 70 feet-ish. Okay, because I already had Entangled prepared. So as soon as I seen it, I would have cast it. Okay. What does that do? Uh, grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground in a 20-foot square starting from the point within range. So really, like, she directed it at it. Um... For one minute, um, it need, well, it needs to make a strength saving throw or it's restrained by the entangling plants. Okay. Uh, that is a 19. It's not entangled. Okay. It's... But it, it's, it is in difficult terrain now. Okay, it did go up the wall and onto the ceiling. Yeah, that's where she casted it. Okay. Like, she casted it at its feet, so... Okay. Man, I don't know about you guys, but my Twitch app is really hating this. Yeah, I think there's something wrong Twitch with... being cray today. I think there's something wrong with... An iPhone? No, he just... No. I think we're the only pleas with iPhones. So, uh... <laughs> Varus... Is going to take out his future seeing book and try and see the future a little bit to see who's going to be attacked next. Okay. Uh, Aurora, I'd say with how fast it can run normally, it made it through and away from you quickly enough. Uh, Varus, you start writing in your book. You see another one of the elves dead. Um, I will also let them know what I saw. Sorry. So, who is this? And he shows the picture. Uh, one of the elves screams and, like, backs away from you and behind someone else. The elves draw their weapons and... Is it you? Are you the one killing, you sick freak? He's been with us the whole I've time. I've been here the whole time. I'm just asking because this is the per next person I'm that I'm seeing who's going to die. Why would you draw a picture of such a thing? Do you really think you can draw that fast? You're a seer, like Lily. Yes and no. I can only do it with this book. I'm gonna try and keep my attention at the one that Varus drew. Okay. You should be happy about this, because now we might be able to keep you alive. Or, you can keep pointing your sword at my friend and die anyway. We should all group together, and go towards the front of the train, because the only people at the front of the train that could have died are the ones operating the train. Yeah. Little dude does have a point. Uh, Aurora, did you walk forward to check on anything before you headed back? Um, if she saw him speed her off, then no, she went back to the group, but she does have Entangled prepared and prepared again because she's pissed now that she didn't capture it. Okay. So if she sees it again, she's going to cast it again. We are dealing with a thing that eats people. It's cool. It's fine. Um, we should, we should really go see, uh, what's going on up front. Everybody needs to stay together. 
which I'm, I'm mostly addressing at like the extra people not in our party. We uh, need to pay attention too to make sure nothing gets past us because if the power goes out again, someone's probably going to die. The, all the elves group together around the one that you drew a picture of and they start heading towards the front of the train. The tieflings are next, followed by the two halflings and one human. Piggy is gonna go. When we leave this room, it is going to turn the lights back off. Just be ready for that. Maybe someone should light a torch. As, um, as you guys yeah. walk towards the front of the train, you notice that the person that was manning the train is currently dead with his throat slit. On one oh, of the fuck. windows, drawn in blood, it says, more. Well, somebody has to drive this fucking train. Well, guys, it could be human. Or human-esque, since it can write. It's sentient. Hey, yeah. hey, dragons can write. Yeah, but most dragons can't fit inside train parts. Most, so I'm just pointing out, you don't have to be humanoid to write. Is there any way we can bring this dead guy back to life? Because I can't drive a train. The tieflings that walk up to you, one of them leans against the, the panel. You know that it mostly drives itself, right? No. They're just there to make sure that everything stops on time. Okay, and what if it doesn't? Then I suppose we die. Alright, then why are you talking? Because it's not a big issue right now. The deaths are a big issue, wouldn't you say? I mean, if we crash into something and we die, then that's still a death. The train will be fine. It's got tracks to keep it going. It's got technology that none of us seem to understand. feel like we should probably just make sure that we don't get, you know, our throat slit real quick. Well, if it would just come in here and fight us like uh, everything else always does, we'd be fine. If the stupid book would do its job, but no, it likes Lily better than me. I think we just need to learn more about it. Well, apparently it really wants that guy. <laughs> I point at the elf. Well, Aurora saw it. Maybe she can use the book. That's yeah. true. I was about to say that. I'll take the book if Iggy wants to give it to me. <laughs> Iggy will absolutely hand it over. <laughs> Screw this! I'm done! She's done with this book. Never, never reading again. I'm gonna reading is dumb! I knew reading was stupid. <laughs> reading rainbow, more like reading lame <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got him. Is this a normal for Iggy? Yeah, Fucking yes it is. Too. Absolutely. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay. So Aurora. You open the book, put your hands in the middle, your eyes turn white. When you look again, you see this image. And oh, no. uh, for those of you that can see it, don't read it. That is for Aurora. Um, she'll say the description. I'm not going to read that out loud. Um, so, like, the group can read it on the screen now. Um, I just don't want to take up that much time. Okay. If it's still on your screen, you can okay. read it if you'd like. Um, um, oh, no. I don't like that. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. I like it. It's dark. Uh, would someone like to read it so that the viewers can hear what you guys are up against? I'll read it. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. 
It is called a duander. Oh, it's called a didgeridoo. You can hit high points, you don't have to read the whole thing. Uh, Duganders are evil shape changers that blend in with unsuspecting mortals. They're real smart. Um, yes. Bad. Terrible. Not real good. Scary. How to kill can only be killed once it's in its true form. You can force a transformation by the moonlight of the full moon or the moonbeam spell. Okay. That's, uh... It's not good. Um, you skip things for the crowd. Aurora well, is going to I'm condensing it for him. Um, say, guys, I've got moonbeam, so she's gonna ready moonbeam the next time she sees it. Uh, is... would like to look outside to see what phase the moon is in. Uh, you see a crescent moon. Moonbeam it is. Yep, that, that checks out. Um, not, uh, Iggy is also pounding in the corner now. It's dumb. So uh, like, what did you static key. Yeah, what did you say? You're all static. Yeah. Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Uh, Iggy is pouting in the corner right now because the book is being mean. It's only because I saw it. Is there is there anybody here that wasn't here a second ago? Uh, perception? Every, everyone looks around. You can make a perception check. But... All of them say that they were with you the whole time. Uh, the elves note that they were with you guys during when Hedwig was there at the breaker. The tiefling said that they stayed close to Archie the whole time. And the halflings and humans said that they have been cowering behind Varus the whole time. Uh, do I... Can I... Can I confirm what the tiefling said? Uh, you remember seeing at least one of them. You weren't really focusing on that, but you do recollect seeing at least one. I'm gonna Is look the... at all of them, and I'm gonna point my crossbow and say, all of you gather up in a bundle now, or I'll start shooting. Uh, the elf that had her uh, death on a piece of paper starts screaming and like crying and falling to the ground and just saying, this is it. Oh my god, this is it. Sit down and shut up. Do That's they gather up? Really tactful. What do their auras look like? They all look white. Like emotion, dark, scared. Was they the... gather up? I'm Even going to. Even when they were telling us where they were at. Yeah. Was the when... human wearing the purple? Like the rest of the political? No. Group? Uh, okay. three of the elves and two of the tieflings were wearing the purple. Elves and tieflings. It's pretty normal for them to wear that kind of attire. It's not out of the norm. For humans, unless they are from somewhere like Archie, they wouldn't have that kind of clothing, and halflings generally don't wear that kind of stuff because they're not that flashy. Varus is going to point out that the last time somebody died that was with, with, with this group that is now was the two humans and only one of them's alive. As in, like, suspecting that they might be this creature. You can't possibly think that I would kill my brother, can you? I oh. cast Zone of Truth at the group of them. Okay, what does that do exactly? Alright, one sec.
You create a magical zone that guards against deception in a 15-foot radius sphere centered on a point. I'm just right in the center of all of them. Until the spell ends, a creature that enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must make a charisma saving throw. Everybody has to make a charisma save. Okay. Do you know if someone failed it? Uh, yes. I know whether each creature succeeds or fails. And it is a DC 14. I'm going to do them individually since you guys are... Uh... If they fail, they cannot speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. Okay. They can, av they can avoid answering questions. They can be evasive as long as they tell the truth, but it has to be the truth or they can just outright not answer. Um, two of the elves got 14. One of the, el one of the other elves got a 7. The human got an 18. I'm going to look at the one that failed. Is it you? No. The... the point the crossbow. Are you sure? I mean, I'm pretty sure, yes. All right. The uh, one halfling got a 10. The other halfling got a 20. The halfling that failed. Is it you? Uh, no. Are you sure? Uh, hold on, Jared. Hold on one second, Jared. The, there are two tieflings that got 21, and then one that got a 26. I'm sorry, what did they get? 21. 26. Two 21s, one 26. Jesus Christ. Uh, keeping in mind that tieflings are liars in this world for political reasons, so their charisma is real high. Um, who else failed? Anybody? Was it all of them I... that, I, that I interrogated? Yeah. It's it was 20 to... foot. What did you got like most of us in the room? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I'm not interrogating everybody, so. Um, I'm going to look at the human that succeeded. I'm going to point the crossbow at him. Is it you? There's only one human left. Oh, did he fail or succeed? He failed. He, he failed. Okay, never mind. Which of you is the monster? All of them say not me. Hey, so we... Quick, quick question. Yes. Sorry. Uh, so we know the part about the families, correct? Uh, if she told you the whole thing, yes. Then, yeah, she said that she would have, <clears throat> um, told us the thingy. Um, I'm gonna go up to, uh, Njorn and say, ask about its family. I need all of you to walk out of the zone. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm instructing them to walk out of the zone of truth. So that they have to re remake the so that So that they have to walk back in. Okay. But I'm going to, the, the last for 10 minutes, so I'm going to start doing this one at a time. Okay, who would you like to see first? Um, we can start with the elves. Okay, do you want all the elves or one first? Uh, one first. Don't know their name, so it doesn't matter who. Okay, there are two females left, one male. Gender. What would you like? Uh, go with the guy first, then. Okay. He got an eight. 
<laughs> Ouch. Are you the monster? No. Are you sure? Wouldn't I know? I'm gonna look back at Archie. What's your mother's name? Kendra. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? Kamen. How long have you lived there? Since I was born. Are you lying? No. Are you avoiding the truth? No. I'll tell him to walk out. Okay. Who do you want next? Uh, one of the female elves. Okay. We'll say blonde brunette. The brunette walks in. She got uh, an 11. Okay. Are you the monster? No. Are you sure? Positive. Where were you born? She looks over at the male and she says, Yiza is my brother. We were born in the same place, same mother. Mm -hmm. Do you eat flesh from man? She looks kind of sick and she says, absolutely not. Tatara right, looks down on those things. Uh, I, I want to, I want to like get close to Njorn again and say, ask if they have any other siblings. I'll nod. Hey, the final elf walks in, blonde. She gets a twenty. Mm. Oh, well. I'm gonna, pre I'm gonna pretend that I, that I don't know. Um, are you the monster? No. Where were you born? Orbury. Do you have any siblings? No. Did you eat them? I just said I didn't have any. Why did you come here? I worship Tatara. I went to Kemen to ask her if I could become a knight. I wasn't ready, so I'm going back to Orberry. All right. Um, who, who else? Uh, you have two halflings, three tieflings, and uh, one human left. Oh boy. Well, the humans failed before. Uh, we'll go to the halflings. Okay. Um, Aurora's gonna get impatient. She's gonna cast Moonbeam in the center, like, near them. Not on them. And she wants to see who shies away. Uh... Remind me again how bright Moonbeam is. Also, can Moonbeam go through ceilings? Yes. I would assume, yeah. 40 Wait, foot it's... cylinder. There's also windows. It is a 40 foot cylinder. Okay. Uh... I'm going to say that it's so bright that multiple people back up including all of the tieflings and all of the elves. But not the human. Da, da, da. But the human doesn't back up? No. And we already cleared all the elves, elves. that we know of, or as best we can. Uh, one of them did make the save. Um, I'm gonna just proceed with the halflings. Okay. Uh, if 
if none of them transformed, then doesn't that mean it's, it's it has to be it here? has to be in the cylinder? Yeah, to it, has, it has to be on them. Oh, okay, it's a damaging spell. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't cast it on anybody. You should have just done it. Uh, Would have probably killed them. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> just kill everybody with it. That's fine. 2d10 radiant damage. It's you, going to kill you've them. got a male and a female halfling. Which gender just, do you want to go first? Just call out non lethal. <laughs> non lethal. <laughs> uh, we'll go with the male, I guess. Okay, he got a three. I'm going to point my crossbow at him, finger on the trigger. Are you a monster? No. Where's your family come from? Harvin City. Do you have any siblings? Yes, and he looks over to the female, and I'm pulling from the chat, and he says her name is Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hunger for man flesh? No. No, I don't. Mm. All right. We'll have the lady halfling come in. Okay. Edwig is keeping eye on the hall this whole time. She got a 17. I'm going to pretend I don't know that. Are you the monster? No. Why should I believe you? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's something killing. From? We don't really know each other. Harvin City. Is that one over there your sibling? Yes. All right, move. Okay, who would you like to see next? The human. Go to the tieflings. Okay. Is there any other, I look around, like, outside of the people we see, is there any other auras anywhere? Uh, you see one through the walls, uh, Ondok is sleeping. He hasn't noticed any of this going oh on. Oh my god, we oh left Ondok through all this. Oh man, sleep through all this shit. The lights sun gone out like four times. There's a thunderstorm outside. This man, nah. <laughs> How the hell is he not died though? Because he's been by himself. No, you know what? Head, head cannon. That thing go, went for own doc, and own doc is fucking level of fireball on its face. Like, not the day. Joke was like, is Ondok? That's why he's so oh, OP. No. <laughs> OP doc. Uh, there are. Two males, one female halfling, or not halfling, tieflings. Which one would you like to go first? We'll go with the female first. Okay. Get, get the one I'm out of the way. I'm going to remind you that their charisma is extremely high. Yeah, yeah, roll it. Okay. <laughs> that was a 19 on the die, so 26. Are you the goddamn monster? Do I look like the goddamn monster? No, I'm fucking not. Yes. Look pretty ugly to me. Where are you from? Hold on one second. I know where they're from. I just have to look at the map because I forgot what it was called. That's on me, not on them. Fair. DM, you're like just ruining our little map immersion. Find it. My immersion. I'm interrogating right now. Uh, I'm from Melis, from the Republic of Vascon. You have any siblings? No. What's your mother's name? Oh god, you guys are make, forcing me to come up with so many <laughs> names. Nina! <laughs> uh, Keep you on your toes! Uh, it's Christina! Christina, there you go. Christina. Do you eat the flesh of man? No. That's disgusting. Really? Yes. You don't like the taste of it? 
Absolutely not. Have you ever tasted it before, then? Oh my god. It implies that you have. You're really fucking <laughs> stupid, you know that? Alright, get the hell out of this fucking thing. Okay, next one. Next one. Uh, that was another natural 19 on the die. Well, heck you and your rules. Sorry. Wait, <laughs> did you not take the good dice from her? What? Did you not take the good dice from you? No, they didn't. This is the one. We did it! You have one of them now. What happened? Wait! Flesh of man. Uh, go ahead, Jared. Do you eat the flesh of men? No. You a monster. No. Why should I believe you? Because we've been with you the whole time. Uh, get the hell out of my way. Okay. Uh, this one got a 10, so that's 17. Damn it. Um, how many people does he have left? Uh, the human is left. She's gonna walk up to Njorn and be like, if you don't figure this out after this one, I'm, I'm just gonna go straight across all of them. That's kind of the plan. Where are you from? They are from... One second. Benaro and the, the Diocese of Adelanya. Mm -hmm. Are you a monster? No. Yeah, somehow I knew you'd say that. Do you have any siblings? Yes. Who? A wampus. I have a, a sister named Kara and a brother named Dimitri. Friction Where and are they? a brother. They're still in our hometown. That is where we're going. Are they both alive? I would hope so. Are you hungry for man flesh? No. Have you eaten man flesh recently? No. I've never eaten man flesh. All right, get out of there. I do wonder, you don't seem to be a hobgoblin of the forces for the kingdom. Could it be you were one of the ones in the outpost that died along What's with that whole you? village? Um, uh, at this, Aurora's gonna light Moonbeam straight across him. He has to make a constitution saving throw. It don't matter because he turns into a monster. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, the suckle on that killing chat. I, I was about to. I was about to say Aurora roast him. <laughs> <laughs> he knew immediately. Oh dear God! Finally. <laughs> I was. I was actually hoping that that was gonna. She was about to just kill a fucking civilian. Uh, well, I didn't. This time. 
Um, what if once the Roar finally got pissed at it acting like that towards Bjorn <laughs> and realizing that's going to hurt him a lot? Okay. Corbett would have been so impressed if you had actually injured just a normal person. At that, the other two tieflings, they do not turn, but I'm going to use the same token. But they get ready to attack you. And let's all make our initiative rolls, please. Is this the exact, like, how the train is? Uh, we're Wherever. Just, yeah, we're just going to use this because it's easier. Okay, because I was by the door on the other end. There's three of them. Uh, you can move to where you were. I just moved them to where uh, Aurora was. You be lucky. I was with Aurora. Tragic. I was next to your... You're going to put oh. that that way. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that beats the whole I was going to try to annoy them to death. Who am I missing? I got six on there. It's me. Don't know. Where are you? What is your some initiative? Oh, nice. At least I know what I'm doing. Maybe my bitter asses. Here are my initiative rolls, so shit the past like three weeks. Uh, where's your token, Giggy? I have to drag it out, apparently. Uh, Sorry. No, that's okay. I just didn't know if I couldn't see it. No, it's not there. Oops. Got to got to be a hey, detective there for a minute. That was pretty fun. That worked, right? 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 Hmm. I was gonna like start running some Batman lines at him. I swear to God, I'm not a monster. Swing at me. Okay, let me know whenever you guys are all set. I said. I was gonna start randomly slamming doors repeatedly to annoy them. All right, first one up is this guy right next to Varus, and he's going to move up and try to hit him with his eviscerate. No, he's one of the ones that's not. So he's going to try to slice you. That's an 18 hit. Varus. Hits. That's 13 damage. And then he's going to try to hit you again. Uh, that was an 11 to hit. That does not hit. Okay. So it goes slashing at you with its claws. Once it hits you, the second time you duck and miss it. Iggy, your turn. Um... I'm gonna cast uh, Bardic Bardic Inspiration on. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Lily. Okay. Uh, that would be Varus. Varus. Yeah. I was gonna say Lily is dead. I mean, uh, I meant Aurora. <laughs> Aurora. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Um, she feels very vital to to this fight. So. Um, and that is, I, just, I believe that's all I can do. Njorn. Um. This one which, is the one that is in its true form right next to Aurora. Okay. I'm going to hmm. caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm going to attack the one that is trying to attack Varus. Okay. I'm going to strafe to the side here a bit. 
Uh, I have my crossbow out, so I'm gonna just shoot him at point blank here. Uh, at disadvantage? No, because I'm a crossbow expert. Okay. Correct. <laughs> 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 ah. Um. Plus six is eight, because it was a two. No, that doesn't hit. <laughs> it it uh, grabs the arrow as it is about to pierce its chest and then tosses it down and kind of hisses at you. I pull out another one and try to do it again. Okay. Because I ignore the loading property. Uh, 13. That still misses. Damn you, you son of a biscuit. It dodges the next one, and it's Varus' turn. Oh, you better hold your butt. Uh, uh DM, real yes. quick, sorry. It should have taken damage when it first hit the light, too. Okay, how much damage? Uh, it has to make a constitution saving throw, though, for the damage part. Uh, that sorry. is... A twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. I think yeah, it saves it. So. Oh, it's half as. Much. It should only take half. It still takes too much. Um. Sorry, Varus. With my bonus action before the end of my turn, I'm gonna cast Zephyr Strike okay. on myself. Four radiant damage. It's four radiant damage. Uh, and I'm going to move over here to flank. Okay. And Lars. with, with Zephyr oh, Strike on, I, uh, I don't provoke opportunity attacks. Okay. Uh, Lars is going to use uh, his long sword. Okay, I, wanna, and... I want to mention that this one is not in its true form, so the damage that you guys have done doesn't seem to be doing much to it. Go ahead. That'd be a 16 to hit. That hits. Okay. Damage. It takes 8 damage. And this this is the blessed weapon. So I don't know if that affects it. Uh, it doesn't seem to. And then I will attack again. A 12 to hit it does not okay anything else no that'll be it hedwick uh, uh okay uh hedwick's gonna move up uh see that varus is already being hurt <laughs> And not wanting a repeat of recent events, he's going to cast Warding Bond between him and Varus. Okay. So, Varus, you have plus one to your AC and all your saving throws. And so do I. Uh... Also, you have resistance to all damage, and so do I. But any damage you take, I will also take. And any damage I take, you will take. Okay, anything and else? That is it, because I don't really got um, bonus actions. <laughs> okay, the one that is turned into its true form looks real angry and tries to hit Aurora with its eviscerate. That is a 16 to hit. Mm. Sounds bad. Wait, sorry. What was going on? It hits. Okay. That's 29 damage. They do a lot more damage in true form. Uh, 
Oh. Good lord. Oh boy. Here's the other thing, guys. I have to make a constitution saving throw, too. Also, only like half of my face is visible I on stream. I'm still concentrating. We only need to see half of you. So, the moon beam. A, all eyes. <laughs> Do you have a laugh? So expressive. No. I got. I got to really act with my eyes now. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh. What did you say about Moonbeam Aurora? Uh, she. She still. She still had it up when she got hit. Uh. She rolled an eighteen for a concentration check. Okay. Torment. Yes. Your turn. All right. I am going to attempt to whack at the one that just whacked at Aurora. Okay. Whack. Uh, so I'm moving here. I didn't mean to roll the damage. We're going to ignore that. That is a 15 to hit. That hits. Well, I rolled the damage. Would that be a sneak attack? That would not be a sneak attack. Uh, yes, it would be because you have some an ally within five feet. All right, that's twenty damage in total. Nice. Oi. Um, and I will attempt to whack it again. Okay. That is another fifteen to hit, which we know hits. Yes. And then, hold on. Uh, I take off the modifier, right? Because it's my offhand. What are you? You're hitting with a short sword. Mm -hmm. For two weapon fighting, yeah. So that's three damage, right? Math. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, a total of 23 damage. Okay. Anything else? No. No, I'm not sure if you heard me. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay, it's the next one's turn. It's going to come up and flank with the, the other one behind Torment. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh... That is a dirty 20. Yep, that hits. So the first hit is 7 damage. And then that is a 26 to hit. Not natural 20. Definitely hits. Uh, 11 damage on the second one. Oh, yes. Archie, your turn. I assume you're the one with the red dot. Yes, that is me. I am going to... Oh god, what am I doing? I'm going to run over here. And I, I am most definitely standing on that couch. And then I am going to... How, how we, I, we don't actually know how tall are these things? Like, how big are they? Uh, when they're crouched over like that, they are... Well, isn't that in its human form? Not yet. Oh, yeah, that is in its human form. So or tiefling form? Yeah, whatever. so it's just the size of a regular tiefling. So my height. Chuck it, in, <laughs> chuck it into the beam. <laughs> Oh, okay, so the the one I the one I'm caddy corner with is not in its true form. No, this one is up here. Okay. Uh. You have orange. I do. So I was not aware of that. Where is the beam at right now? You know what? I am. Oh God, the beam is should be on this one. This was the one that tran this was the one that transformed. Yes. So I 
You can, okay. since you didn't know which one, you can move to a different spot if you want. I'll allow it. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't aware that these two had transformed. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna head down there. I was here. There are five, ten, fifteen, oh, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I'm gonna go here, and then I'm actually going to attempt to. I want to uh, throat punch the transformed one. Okay. <laughs> right in the gullet. <laughs> Oh, I think that's a 16 to hit. That hits. Let me, hold on, let me, actually, let me double check that. 15 to hit. That still hits. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to do some whack damage. Um... Hold on. Um, oh, I wanted to do this as a... Sorry, I forgot to say before I rolled. Um, I wanted to do this as a Tavern Brawler strike. Okay. Okay. So, that is four plus three, so seven bludgeoning damage. And then I want to use my bonus action to grapple it with my Tavern Brawler gra uh, grapple. Okay. What do I have to make? Uh, we have to do a challenge, a grapple challenge. Okay. That was a uh, 20. I don't think I should count. I didn't land in the dice tray. It shouldn't count. <laughs> no. And you didn't end up grappling it. Is there anything else you want to do, Archie? Uh, no, I am all out of the actions. Okay, Aurora? Ripperoni. Wait, doesn't it? Oh, a shape changer makes its saving throw a disadvantage. Oh, that is true. Yeah, you should let it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's when it starts its turn, so I can do something else. It's also not like concentration. Correct. Um, because I can't afford to take another hit. Um, I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. And... Good job. Um, I'm gonna cast it at the first level. I get seven healing. Okay. Anything um, else? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, it's this one's turn. It is going to try to hit Njorn slash. That okay. is a 16 to hit. That is a miss now. With okay. my scale armor. And then yeah. 21 to hit. Okay, that still hits. That's 9 damage. Iggy! Okay, it's me. Um, so Iggy is going to cast Motivational Speech. Uh, so she's going to cast it at... Everyone but herself and Hedwig. So Torment, Aurora, Archie, Njorn, and not Lily. Varus. Varus, that's the one. It, it took me forever to get Lily down, okay? This is hard. Um, 
Motivational speech, uh, for the duration of an hour, everyone affected gets five temporary hit points and has an advantage on wisdom saving throws. If you guys get hit, you have an advantage on your next attack roll. Uh, once you lose your temporary hit points, though, you lose the other effects of the spell. So, don't get hit. And that's it. That's all I got. Okay, Njorn. Sound advice. Don't get hit. Give me one sec. That's actually okay. her speech as well. Don't get hit. Wait, wait. So, is who who is all affected? Everyone but me and Hedwig. Okay. She can't give herself a pep talk. I mean, I probably can, but I can only do five people. So. I was like, Iggy, or Iggy what? probably could. What did it do again? Uh, hold on a second. I just closed. I'm oh, sorry. I, I my nose felt runny. It felt like it was bleeding oh, for fine. a sec. So I, I had to like make sure my nose wasn't bleeding. You're fine. Uh, so you get five temporary hit points. You get an advantage on wisdom saving throws, and if you get hit by an attack, you have advantage on your next attack roll. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Um, first I'm going to step over here and shoot my crossbow at the uh the big the big boy the big transformed one okay um i'm going to use the zephyr strike ability and give myself advantage on that which uh makes that a critical hit nice also slayer's prey haha <laughs> there we go haha <laughs> yeah yeah, I did that. Let me let me see here. So it's oh. gotta fetch dice here. One sec. Zephyr strike is also a D eight. Okay. Let me roll all these dice. Cool, cool. all right. Plus one plus my modifier is twenty. Four damage and twenty four damage, seven of that is force damage because I don't know if that matters or not. Okay. <clears throat> it screams in pain, it's looking pretty bad. I'm gonna do like a combat roll while I'm reloading and uh, shimmy back here to flank with uh, Varus, and I'm gonna try and shoot this one in front of me. Okay. Uh, pretty good. That's a natural 19. Okay. And that one does nine damage. Okay. You shoot it. It laughs, pulls out the arrow, and immediately heals. Ooh. All right, I don't think we can hurt it if it's not transformed. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Varus. Okay. Varus is going to move over here and then and also switch to his longbow and attack the big one okay uh, 15 to hit that hits would it be that guy right now hmm <laughs> the 
so technically you have disadvantage still because there's an enemy next to you. It's not just who you're fighting with a ranged weapon giving disadvantage, it's anything being next to you gives you disadvantage no matter who you're targeting. I really wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> rules I... are rules. I know. I was gonna let that one go, but you know. <laughs> Cause that's a one on the die. Uh roll to roll damage for Archie since he's standing next to it then. Hi Archie. Wait, where is Archie? Uh right next to it with the red dot. I don't even see that. Right here. Okay. Or yeah, Archie's not there on my screen. He's not there on mine either. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no, guys. <laughs> now roll 20s fucking up. <laughs> oh no, not again. Uh, that's that's oh, going to oh, be no. max on hit, which is 11. Uh Archie, you take 11 damage from Varus. Anything else? Okay. No. Actually, wait. I want to shoot it. But yes, my um, uh, little dragon is going to use his Euphora breath since I am still within five feet of the other one. Okay. The target must succeed. A DC 11 wisdom throw. Okay. I just want to reiterate, if it enters the battle, they will be able to hit it. Yes, I know. Okay. Uh, what do I need to roll again? Wisdom saving throw. Okay. They get advantage on wisdom saving throws. Playing a dangerous game with your tiny dragon. Uh, that is a 16. Mine. Anything else? Nope. Hedwick. I only have the end of the wisdom saving throw. This is uh, good to know. That means I will not go blowing a load in case it fails. Um, I'm going to point at this boy here and just tell him, problem. He has to make a wisdom saving throw or be affected by a command to grovel. That is a 17. Okay. That's, then nothing happens. Okay. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> okay. This one is going to take another slash at Aurora because she's the source of the moonbeam. Hold up. It's starting its turn, so it needs to make a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Okay. That is a... Ten. Oh, buddy. It fails, and it takes 15 radiant damage. Yeah, son. That was one more damage yeah, than it needed to. Yeah, boy. It, it goes to attack Aurora, and all of a sudden, radiant light comes out of its eyes, out of its mouth, and it poofs into thin air, and that one is dead. Yeah. Rip. So it essentially disintegrates. F in chat for a shapeshifty thing. Big Fs only. All right. Torment. Yes. Um. Yeah. Hmm. 
I should have did this last turn. I always forget I have this damn thing. Rip. Okay. Um. Are you letting us down? I am, as always. Damn it. Use the force. All right, so I'm just going to, I guess, whack this one, even though I know it won't do much. Okay. That is a 24 to hit. That hits? Or 22, sorry, that. For a total of... Six damage. Wait. Six damage? <clears throat> Sixteen damage. You take a slice out of him. He chuckles and it heals immediately. As a bonus action, I'm gonna... Disengage. Okay. Um, is that a movement thing too? Uh, yeah, you can move away if you disengage. It's going to move back. Yeah. And I am return. No wonder we couldn't see him. I have us on top of him, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That explains it. Uh, this one is going to. Scream and try to hit Aurora because you just killed his best friend. Oh no. Oh, not his best friend. Uh, that's 18 to hit on the first one. I'm assuming that hits. Yes. That's 8 damage on the first one and it's gonna try to slash you again. That was a natural 20. Yeah. You also had 5 temp HP. Just remember yeah. reminding you. That was yeah. the thing. That's 21 damage. Nice. And that's the end of his turn. Uh, Aurora is down. Yep. Archie. And that's bad because she's the only one with the moonbeam spell that I know of. <laughs> she yes. sure is. I'm going to see that happen and. Immediately sidestep over. And I am going to cast... Come on. Why is it... What is going on? Why is it doing this? Nobody knows. Um, I'm going to cast, um, Healing Word on, uh, Aurora. Okay. 3d4. All are my fours. Yeah. I got it. Nice. Uh, so seven plus, I think it's three. No, seven plus four. Oh, 11, you get 11. Um, and then my. I can't remember what all I can do with my bonus action. That was your bonus action. Oh yeah, healing word is a bonus action. Uh, so after I do that, I'm going to turn toward the 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 thing I'm a bobber. It's still in so tiefling your... form, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. I am going to. I'm going to. I'm going to punch it in the face. Okay. Throw, throw it off the train. 
No, you're not. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. Who did uh, you punch in the face instead? What do you roll? Yep. What did you roll? Mm -hmm. uh, you are taller than Aurora, that is true. So, let's say that you you did cure wounds on her, correct? Uh, healing word. Okay, you did healing word, and then you got a little overzealous whenever you tried to punch him, and you end up, like, putting too much force behind it and twirling around and falling on your butt. So I'm now prone? Yes. Okay. Any, anything else? No, that's actually, I have movement speed left, technically. Okay. Do you want to stand I up? I would like to use, I would like to use half of that to at least to get up. Okay. And then Aurora. that's, that's all I can do. Aurora. Oh. I'm going to get up. <laughs> and I'm gonna cast Moonbeam again. On which one? Uh, the one in front of me. Okay. This time it will be. Go ahead. Go ahead. This time it's at the third third level. Okay. Um, and it does say that. Um, any shape changer. She took advantage on the last one. Oh, she did. No, oh, I didn't know. I didn't hear you say that. It's a con, right? Yeah, at disadvantage. Because that's how I killed that. Uh, <laughs> that is a 14. What is your DC? 14. Of course. Uh, it takes 5 radiant damage. Okay. And it says, you bitch, as it hisses and turns into its true form. Anything else? Uh... I can't do that. No, that's it. Okay, this guy that's still in tiefling form is going to try to hit Njorn. Okay. Uh, 21? Yes. That's 14 damage. Oh! And... A... Or 9 damage because of the temp HP. <laughs> uh, 25 to hit? Yeah... That's 12 damage. Hoi! This is starting to hurt. And Iggy's turn. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word on uh, Aurora. You get seven health. And the healing word of the day is... <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. That's a word. Um, and then... Shit, hold on, I'm trying to remember. Is Bardic Inspiration a bonus, or is that yes. a... Oh, okay. All right, then nothing. I got nothing. Okay, Njorn. Okay. Uh, as my bonus action, I'm first going to cast Zephyr Strike again. I'm going to move over here. I'm going to shoot the transformed one with the crossbow and give myself advantage with Zephyr Strike. Uh, I'll take the 14 instead of the natural one. Uh, plus my modifier is a uh, dirty 20. And I'll use the Zephyr Strike damage too. Okay. And which one are you hitting again? I'm sorry. The, the big one. Okay. The, the transformed one. 
Okay. That is a total of 11 damage. Six of it is force damage. Okay. Anything else? I'm, uh, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to come to over here. Uh, you're, with you're outside. Archie. You're going to go outside of the train? You're outside oh, Jesus. The, the I can't train. see. Okay, then right here. That's fine. Okay. He's like, and oh, I'm done. We're done. I'm just leaving. Fuck this just shit out of my mouth. Just jump out the window. Uh, I'm just going to shoot from right here. Okay. Uh, I don't think that will. 11 to hit. No, that does not hit. Okay, that is fine. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Okay, Varus. Wait, wait, wait. I might have a thing. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Um, saving face. If I miss with an attack, I can gain a bonus equal to the number of allies within 30 feet of me, up okay. to a maximum of five. Okay. Uh, which I believe is everybody. So, 16? What did I say? 11 was the first one? Yeah. Uh, 16 to hit, then? That hits. Haha! -ha, suck it! I always forget that I have that ability. Uh, wrong die. Eight piercing damage. And now that's it. That's literally everything I had. Okay, Varus? Varus is move here. He's not disengaging, so... And he's gonna attack the... The one that's in its true form is his longbow. Okay, go ahead. Hey, or not. Who am I attacking? Because that was a nat one. Hmm. Uh... Get rid of those die. I already got rid of it. <laughs> Well, you're straight across from Yorn, so go ahead and give it to him. At least it wasn't as much as this time. There's only only six. Times. Anything else? That was so. Um, yeah, he's going to try and use his bow again. Does Does that count for Yorn's advantage for the? <laughs> Because he got hit. Uh, you know what? It very well. Uh, you know what? We're, we'll take it. I get advantage on my next strike. Do you? I'll take it oh. off of that hit. <laughs> Nine to hit, which I'm assuming doesn't. That does not hit. That's uh, that's his turn. Okay. Hedwick. Hmm. He's gonna hop up on top of this uh bar. Wait, no, we're not that's not really there, is it? Let's try it. <laughs> the couch? No, none of this crap's here. No, this is the actually the front of the train. So right. Yes. Never mind. He's not hopping up on anything, I guess. <laughs> uh but he is still doing what I was gonna do. Where to tank? What about? Was that English? In some place, maybe. <laughs> this is gonna give you all a big thumbs up and cast Beacon of Hope. As you all are infused with a strong sense of hope. I'm helping. Anything else? Uh, no. But uh, all healing is maxed. Advantage on wisdom saves and death saving oh, throws. Yeah. Torment. Yes. You're done. Um, tor Torment shall pull out their short bow. 
and attempt to whack the big end. Whack Mr. Right. Big Man. That's a 15 to hit. That hits. That is a total of 16 damage. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. The big um, Go ahead. It needs to make a constitution saving throw since it's starting its turn in it. At disadvantage. Oh, buddy. Ah, roast I his ass. Got him. That was a seven. Ooh, child. That was, that was a level three movie. Oh, oh no. 23 radiant damage. Uh, how, oh, would you like, how would you like to do that? Oh. Just roast his ass. Just his ass? Just the butt. <laughs> Just the ro ro roasted ass, ro 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 roasted ass. This Just is the second kill that Aurora's gotten in this combat. Congratulations. Hey, hey, hey. Torment helped both of those <laughs> by like half, okay? Maybe uh. not half, but like Torment did a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing some hefty chunks here. Varus tried, but he's only attacked the team. Okay, Aurora. Uh, that'd be that's actually me. <laughs> All right, right, Archie. Sorry. Um. So seeing that seeing seeing this particular thing happen twice, I'm actually going to come. I'm going to run over here, and then I am going to as i'm running over there i'm going to pull out my family warhammer okay not the rod the family warhammer and then i'm going to prepare to hit it and i'm going to ready it as an action okay aurora i'm i'm going to wait till it transforms before hitting it uh Yeah, I'm going to move the moonbeam over to it, but I'm not moving. Okay, and I still have to make the con? E yes, at disadvantage. Well, that was a natural one, so... Yeah, excellent. That, Death. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> God! We knew Aurora got an instant oh. kill. 23 radiant damage again. Nice. <laughs> Okay, and Archie, you get to make your attack. Okay. Uh, no, not using that one. Screw that one. Oh my god! Uh, use it with my hammer. Uh, oh, a six. Uh, non non natural twenty. That hits. That is um that is nine bludgeoning damage. Okay. Anything else? Uh no, that was the only action I read I read readied. Okay. Uh this big boy is gonna run past you and Hedwick, you guys can make opportunity attacks if you would like. I don't have a weapon. Ye yes, I would. I would like her. <laughs> okay. You could punch it. I'm swinging again with my hammer. Uh, eighteen to hit. That hits. Uh, seven bludgeoning damage. 
Um, um, if it leaves Moonbeam, does it transform back? No. Okay. Oh, no, I can't do that. Never mind. Nope. Okay, it's going to try to hit you with its eviscerate, Aurora, since you're the one that has the... Well, that's unfortunate. That was a natural one. So. <laughs> it hit itself. It hurt itself in its confusion. <laughs> Imagine accidentally eviscerating yourself. Uh, it realizes. Who am I killing? It realizes that that doesn't work, and it starts charging towards Unyorn, and it's going to try to go out the window. Can I try and fucking grab his ass when he goes up up that way. Uh, opportunity. Go ahead. This is the. No, none of this is gonna hit, so it doesn't matter. Stice is done for. Uh, There's another nine. Eighteen. What are you trying to do? I'm I'm trying to grapple him because it, it looks like he's about to jump out the window. Uh. Okay, you grappled him. Okay. Now there's the unfortunate aspect of being grappled onto a huge beast. Iggy. Um, okay, so since Iggy <clears throat> sees that, you know, Njorn is trying to keep this thing in, she's gonna draw, you know, go, go actually attack for once. What? Yeah! She's gonna wait, do it, guys! Wait. She has a weapon? Iggy? Yeah, she's always had a weapon! She does <laughs> things! She actually does have a weapon. She doesn't just play uh, the guitar. So uh, we've we've seen the rapier yeah, like she once has the rapier. or twice. Yeah, she has twice. one. All right, uh, it's been like a minute since I've used this, so give me one second. <laughs> Iggy's like, wait, which is the stabby end? <laughs> just pulls out the whole, like, takes the rapier, like, with its scabbard on. Still, is it is it Dex that with the with the rapier and the bard? With with a rapier in general, um, you can use your dex modifier to attack with instead of strength. That's good, because my strength modifier is zero, so... Yes. Well, that's a 13. That does not hit. She's. It's been a while since she's used it, so she misses a little bit. Still rusty. Okay. Anything else? Um. No, I don't think so. Yorn. Um. I relearned. Going to drop my crossbow on the ground and pull out my magic hand axe, and I'm gonna try and beat this guy's face in. Okay. Maybe Rory remembers uh, why she doesn't use the rapier anymore. Off. Oh, wait, before I make that attack, I'm going to use my bonus action to designate this one my Slayer's Prey. Now I'm going to attack. I'm so bad at remembering to do that. Uh, 22 to hit. That's... Uh, not the greatest damage. Four damage. So, you know, this is a gentleman's damage. Okay. And I'm going to try and chop him in the dome piece again. And I'm going to use the advantage from Iggy's spell thing. Yeah, uh, finally! Yeah! yeah. Uh, nat 20. <laughs> nice. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was actually the first roll. I didn't even roll the second. We'll see. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and take the nat 20 instead. <laughs> That is pretty good. Plus three is 13. 13 damage. Okay. Looking pretty bad. Anything else? 
Um, that is it. Varus. Uh, Varus is going to just, uh, uh, move over here, and as he's moving, he's going to put his bow away and pull out his longsword. Because clearly, none of his attacks of his bow has been working. It's been a while. And attack the thing. He forgot how to bow. Yeah, he did. Thankfully, there's an advantage. No, it's, it, it'd be a five to hit. That does not. And second attack. Wow, you are Lily's brother, aren't you? <laughs> 19 to hit. That hits. Yay! Finally. The curse has been broken. Temporarily. Okay. For now. <laughs> For right now. Nah, Lily got like one or two hits in. Okay, uh, that is eight damage. Usually one of her four hits around would hit. One, one of six. <laughs> okay, anything else? Um... Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, have my dragon use superior invisibility and try to hide. Okay. Hedwig. Uh, in the end, attempts to not let this thing get away again. Um, going to cast command and tell it to grovel again. What do I gotta make? Wisdom saving throw. Uh, Sixteen. Damn it! That is just my DC. So close. Yet so far away. <laughs> Anything else? So, no. Torment. All right. Torment is going to attempt to finish this. Yeah, stop saving against my shit, yo. Let him be cool, BG. I'm sorry. You're not. No, I'm not. You're not sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to roll it like that, but it's too late. Take it back. You know what? It's okay. It's a crit. Nice. Finish him. A twenty-six to hit. That hits. Dazzle. Um. Will it track though? That's the question. It, oh, there we go. Twenty-six plus. Fuck. Whatever this says. Whatever this says. How would you like 19. to do that? Nineteen. Um. I just straight headshot him, but like the the amount of force behind it, like literally just sent his head stabbed against whatever window or like door was to the train. So he's just stuck there, like dangling. Sorry, no. Well, he's not dangling, he's really tall, but he's just stuck. Ah, I see. The old railway rifle from Fallout. Okay. Yeah. As the fight ends, you guys see the lights start flickering. On and off. Then all of a sudden, all the light bulbs in the room blows. And you're suddenly on a lot of sand. You look around, there's clear si skies all around you. And I have a special guest that would like to tell you guys something. I'm sorry? Hello? I didn't know that this there have been happened. rumblings in the heavens that some of the gods don't believe that the marked are capable of keeping the prophecy from coming true. Some want to join the fight, and others worry that it bring too much destruction to the mortal realms. That sounds like Lily, guys. Mind blown. Wait, who is that? Is that all you wanted to give them, Lily? Oh, am I allowed to say one more thing? Sure. Sure. I'm the better twin. Agree! I agree! I agree! Uh, no, um, 
Uh, I'll be watching you guys. And you guys get pulled back into the train and... Wait, wait, wait. Before we go... Snap back to reality. Before we go, I need Iggy to oh, say... Goes goes I will get very naked very soon. <laughs> <laughs> no. You guys get pulled back into reality at the train. And that's where we're going to end the session.